the bottom line lesson, I think, uh, learned from uh, the Vietnam experience is that this country cannot be successful in anything. Certainly can't be successful on a battlefield unless the, the policy is accepted and supported by the American people. Although he has been retired from the Army since 1972, following 36 years of service that began when he graduated from the United States Military Academy, General William Westmoreland still has a message for the American people. The former U.S. Army Chief of Staff and Commander of U.S. Military Forces in Vietnam isn't hesitant to air today's issues as well as those painful ones during the Vietnam struggle. For example, his assessment of the media coverage in Nam during the war years. When you're in a foreign country, and when you're at war, and a major percentage of the coverage is in the sensational side, people that don't know the country and have never been there uh, do get a distorted impression. Would you care to comment on the media today in light of your experiences with CBS's 60 Minutes? I do feel that every institution in our society, and our society consists of collectively numbers of institutions, do have a responsibility within our open free society uh, to police themselves uh, and adhere to a code of ethics. Is genuine nuclear disarmament feasible between the United States and the Soviet Union? No, oh, I think it is. I think it's got to be on a mutual basis, though. I think we're going to have to improve our uh, nuclear arms uh, before the Soviet Union are encouraged to make any reductions. But I, I feel very strongly that uh, the route to peace is, is strength. I think our policy of deterrent is a valid, valid one, but uh, for it to work, we have to have a capability that is perceived by the Soviet Union as being a, a capability that will rebound to their disinterest if they try to start a nuclear war. Current critics of our involvement in El Salvador say that it could become another Vietnam. Is this a possibility? Uh, El Salvador is far more important to us than uh, Southeast Asia strategically. Because through the uh, Gulf of Mexico passes, and through the Caribbean islands, pass a major share of our shipping. In addition to that, all traffic going through the Panama Canal goes through that area, and the Panama Canal can be put in jeopardy itself. And if if the domino theory unfolds in that area. If we can stop this trend by giving Salvador, El Salvador more advice and more advisors and more uh, financial assistance, uh, it'll certainly be more than worth the price. If we don't do that, we might find ourselves in a position where American troops might have to be committed, which we'd like to avoid. Was there a point early in the war where we could have pulled out with honor? Yes, there was. Um, after the assassination of President Jim, which was overthrown with the acquiescence of, uh, of our president, there was political turmoil that pervaded that society for about two years. I mean, I know because I was there. Realizing that uh, there was a problem of leadership and coalescing that country to pursue a war against a well-organized, aggressive, ruthless North Vietnam, uh, we could have justified, I think, a pullout at that time. But I think it had been political suicide for the Democrats. One wonders if all our military may have died in vain. Domino theory stopped in Indochina. Yes, South Vietnam was overrun, yes, they totally dominate uh, Laos, yes, they invaded Cambodia. 
But by virtue of our holding the line for 10 years, those ASEAN countries of Southeast Asia, uh, we gave them a breathing spell. And the domino theory stopped because they had a chance to, to coalesce uh, politically and economically and build up a resistance. And they would not have had that resistance if we had not held the line for 10 years. History will record that although we did not fulfill our, our commitment to the South Vietnamese people, and Indochina did fall after our troops had been withdrawn, not before, but after. Lately, we've learned of secret forays into Laos uh, in search of POWs, MIAs, most notably by former Green Beret Colonel Lieutenant James Bull Greitz. Do you feel that there are still some MIAs alive in Southeast Asia? Yeah, alive? I think not only a possibility. I think it's very probable that there are some people uh, still alive uh, in, uh, in Indochina. How do we get our government to do something about it? I think the government is, is aware of this, and I know they are, and I think they're working diligently to try to trace down all the leads and all the tidbits of intelligence that have been acquired. Mr. Reagan, I think, has taken a very positive attitude, and I think so has the State Department. Is there any aspect about the Vietnam War that you feel the American people never really fully understood? I think there are many. There are many myths that are being knocked down bit by bit. One was that this was a public uprising by the people of South Vietnam uh, against uh, the Saigon regime. From the very beginning, it was a war of a planned aggression by communists in North Vietnam from Hanoi. Uh, the bottom line lesson, I think, uh, learned from uh, Vietnam experience is that this country cannot be successful in anything, certainly can't be successful on a battlefield, unless the, the policy is accepted and supported by the American people. Without that, uh, success is not in the cards. Okay.